Do you know how important injection well management is? And, what if an injection well isn't optimally engineered? Get your coffee and let's find out the answer. The first known geothermal injection well, in a high temperature system, was done in the Ahuashapan field, in El Salvador, starting in 1969, during the initial testing period of the field. On the other hand, low temperature injection also started in the Paris Basin in 1969. And during the 1970s, the number of injection operations started picking up. We all now agree, that injection well has been successfully practiced in a field for a long time. But, what is exactly the geothermal injection process? Geothermal injection is a process to return all of the fluid produced from a reservoir back into the geothermal system, after the energy has been extracted from the fluid. Then, why is it so important in the geothermal power plant? Axelson in 2008 mentioned that such waters might carry chemicals harmful to the environment. Therefore, the fluids should be injected back into the reservoir. Injection process also provides an additional recharge to geothermal reservoirs, and as such counteracts pressure drawdown due to production. Therefore, resulting in more extraction of the thermal energy from reservoir rocks than without injection. Another purpose of injection in the management of geothermal resources is mentioned by Bromley in 2006, in which targeted injection can enhance or revitalize surface thermal features such as hot springs and fumaroles. From this explanation, we know that excellent design of injection well is not only to provide environment-friendly disposal technique, but also greatly improve the efficiency and increase the longevity of geothermal utilization. Beside the advantages of injection process mentioned earlier, there are some problems and obstacles related with the process. In cases where the spacing between injection and production wells is close, and direct flow paths between the two wells exist, it is likely to cause the decrease in production well temperature or cold front breakthrough. Silica scaling in surface and injection pipelines can happen after the flashing process in a separator or a power plant, the separated fluid becomes supersaturated then silicon oxide and silica will precipitate from the fluid. One of the solutions for this problem is by installing a hot injection, where the brine is injected directly from a separator with temperature around 160 to 200 degrees Celsius. Another solution is by using cold injection, where the brine is temporarily stored in a pond so that the mineral deposits can be released from the fluid. Another type of scaling might also occur during injection such as carbonate precipitation. This process is minimized by operating the injection at sufficiently high pressure. Injecting the fluid back into sandstone reservoirs can also lead to a challenge where the injectivity of the injection wells decreases very rapidly. This phenomenon is caused by the rapid clogging of aquifers next to injection wells in sandstone reservoirs by fine sand and precipitation materials. The solution for this problem is by keeping the brine completely oxygen-free, as well as being passed through a fine filter. Corrosion can also be an issue as we are dealing with the water over time. However, Corrosion can be minimized by injecting a corrosion inhibitor. Careful and comprehensive monitoring of injection well and the possible effects of the injection process is essential for successful injection management. 
This topic will cover one of the techniques of injection well management by using decline curve analysis and how machine learning can be an alternative to calculate decline curve.